Man, it's kind of cool when you're sitting here looking at, you got the Gen 1 that they use for almost 50 years, yeah. and you jump up to the Gen 3, and sitting right here from our buddy James Rivard Parts, our Chevy performance guy down the road, woohoo, new LS3. That's right, and you know what? It was a huge leap to the Gen 3, the LS1. Now this is just a small evolution, yeah. but somewhere in that evolution, they found another 80 horsepower. This is 430 horsepower in production trim with cast iron manifolds. Unbelievable. All right, well, I'm ready to dig into this thing. Yeah, so we're gonna show you a few of those, you know, leaps with that 80 horsepower where they came from. So you know what? Let's start tearing into it. This thing is so clean. We're gonna get our hands dirty, man. I'm gonna actually wash mine. <laughs> We got our LS3 head off. We can kind of see some of the places where they picked up that 80 some horsepower. Now the first place, valve sizes. So here's the original LS1 head over here. Here's the LS3. When I stack them, you can kind of see how much bigger it got. So you can get a lot more air in there. What's interesting, the gap between the valves is about the same between the heads. So to grow a bigger valve, they had to move them apart. But because the bore is bigger, they had the space. That opened up some more opportunities. So moving that valve over lets that port on this side get a little bit bigger. And now there's no more cathedral port. But they did another trick. Check out these rocker arms. They actually offset the arm. So they moved the arm over. They moved the push rod over. And now they're trying to reach over to actuate the valve to open this up even more. So now they've got a more, let's say, appropriate or better flowing wide and shorter port so this thing can breathe a ton of air. They've got improvements on the exhaust side too so that flows better. But another trick that's kind of neat, check out the stems. My LS1, my LS3, they actually hollowed out the stem to make the valve lighter because the head got bigger. So now they can still maintain those RPMs and they can still maintain that valve control at those higher speeds. Now what's also kind of cool, check this out, the exhaust is hollow but inside that stem is sodium. Now at room temperature, it's pretty much a solid, but as it gets hotter and hotter, it becomes a liquid. Well, that liquid is now sloshing back and forth and back and forth, and it's taking all the heat that's going into that valve head, and it's working it up the stem so that you can take it out in the guide and put it through you know, the cooling chamber. So it's moving heat from the head up to the stem via some liquid sloshing around. Crazy stuff. Those are some of the kind of race technologies baked right into a production head. So the intake got better, the throttle body got bigger, but there's a few more places where they picked up power. We're gonna show you. Okay, let's get into some of the differences in the blocks and I'll show you how they achieve that 80 plus horsepower gain. All right, the old Gen 1, the 350, a four inch board, I mean a four inch hole. The stroke was 3.48 inches, but this block is a beast, man. It is heavy. <laughs> yeah, but, old iron blocks versus uh, the new. Right? And if you're looking at cubic inches versus liters, everything's in liters now, but it's about 60, 61 cubic inches per liter. So both of these run about 5.7 liters, but the bore on this LS1 is 3.8. Nine, they increased the horsepower by having a longer stroke. Strokes 3.62. All the LS motors, minus the LS7, share a common stroke of 3.6. Now you jump over here to this beast, and they've increased the board to 4.065, have that common stroke of 3.62, gives you cubic inches of 376 cubic inches or 6.2 liters. Yeah, that's a mouthful, man. Yes. So we've got some growing here. We're getting bigger and bigger in displacement. No replacement for displacement for making Man. power. Now, as he was saying, the earlier blocks are all cast iron. Well, these are aluminum. They make iron versions too in the trucks, but the aluminum ones are great for his yeah. performance guys, you know, up to a certain point, yeah. you know? So they're nice and light to keep the front end from getting too heavy. Now, again, these are cast, sand cast, and they've got the liners, the iron liners, cast yeah. right in, so all they have to do is start machining. Now, you can see the differences in head gasket. This is an old kind of graphite layered one. This is a multi-layered steel gasket, so this That's is the so newer cool. technology, which is really nice. Now, Kev, I know that these have this, this active fuel management, which basically, I believe it means you could turn an eight-cylinder, a V8, into a four-cylinder when you have a low load on it. Yeah, so active fuel management, displacement on demand, so you can take and knock four cylinders off 
so you're not using them, you're acting like a four cylinder engine. So even though these are the same engines and you can swap a lot of the parts, they've baked in for more technology right. into the later models. So this has oil circuitry. It'll actually collapse lifters. So they're not pushing the valve open and closed. Those cylinders, the valves stay closed and they're just kind of dead. So I can run on a four cylinder engine so I can go bang, 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 you know, so I can get the right firing order. But now I got less cylinders, better fuel economy. And the best part is more horsepower.